Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic. Let's talk about dungeons and let's talk about raiding and specifically the tuning that Blizzard will have for dungeons and raids in Burning Crusade Classic. At BlizzCon, at the roundtable discussion, they indicated that they are looking to make some changes and they are looking to make things more difficult. They didn't say pre-nerf, but that's the way a lot of people that watch that are taking it as that they're going, going to implement pre-nerf bosses and maybe even dungeons uh, in Burning Crusade Classic. Again, we don't know this for certain. We don't actually know what their plans are, but they talked about Moro and they went into the, some details about like how they would do things. With Moro in the initial version of the boss fight, the second phase, Entropius, the Entropius phase, had a spell pushback, which made it far more difficult for casters and far more difficult for healers to be able to do anything. This was one of the big reasons why that particular phase was so difficult, why so many guilds, even top guilds, struggled to do it. Blizzard then removed the uh, spell pushback. And how Blizzard in BC Classic is likely to keep that change. You won't have spell pushback in Entropius. That's what they've indicated. Or how they're unlikely to have spell pushback. They didn't give uh, any kind of firm announcement of what they're planning on doing, but they just talked about like, oh, that's the kind of thing that we wouldn't want to keep in necessarily. But it's not a firm commitment. Then they talked about how in the third iteration of Moru, they nerfed the HP of things during the boss fight, the adds, the boss, and how they would reverse that change. So Moru and the adds would have their original HP values, which would make the fight considerably harder, but not frustrating as being unable to cast your spells, which was certainly uh, an issue for quite a lot of people during that boss fight on retail. It's worth knowing that even with post nerf values, even with the spell pushback removed, even with the HP of things lowered, Moru was only killed by about 700 or so guilds back on retail. Of course, things have changed, but Moru was an, a very difficult fight. The reason he was so difficult is it was a boss fight where you had constant waves of ads coming and you also had a boss that you needed to DPS down. The problem is that if you, didn't, if you weren't able to kill one wave of ads before the next one spawned or thereabouts, you were likely to wipe very quickly. The ads were very difficult, they did a lot of damage. It was very easy for a raid team to wipe during that boss fight. Very difficult, it's where min-maxing really took off with Sunwall Plateau where raiding became this min-max culture that we saw, or where it started really becoming about min-max culture. It's where virtually every DPSer went leatherworking for the sake of the DPS improvement. It's where the number of healers in the raid was lowered by quite a significant amount from what we had previously. And it's where uh, shamans and warlocks, in particular on Moru, were made mandatory for any guild to be able to get the boss down. Moru changed the way raiding was. Sunwell, in general, changed the way raiding was approached by a lot of guilds, uh, given how difficult it was, and started becoming what it is uh, today because of how difficult it was. Uh, I do feel that given the knowledge people have nowadays and the numbers that people are able to put off, that is a welcome change to make things more difficult, but it's never quite that simple. When it comes to dungeons, Blizzard could go in many different ways. Obviously, HP values and damage values will have an impact on how difficult things are, but I don't think worshipping at the altar of difficulties just for difficulty's sake is worth it. I think things should be interesting, but not stressful, not annoying, because there are potentially a lot of annoyances people can have while doing pre-nerf heroic dungeons in the Burning Crusade. An example I can give here is cleaves, cleave damage. So cleaves in Burning Crusade originally on retail were ridiculous. They were so ridiculous and not only did they do an enormous amount of damage, which could kill your tank if your tank didn't know what they were doing, if they were under geared, if they were tanking too many mobs, but not only that, the cleave radius was almost 360. There was a tiny spot right behind a mob where, or a boss where you could be safe, but it was very difficult to get, uh, get to that spot. And what this really means in practice, if Blizzard were to bring something like this back in TBC Classic, 
is that melee, who are going to struggle initially in Burning Crusade, regardless of what Blizzard does, just because of the way they scale in terms of damage, uh, melee are going to have a hell of a time. And it's it will simply result in them doing less heroic dungeons, be, them being brought less, far less than they should in these kind of places. Because if you're going to die as a melee, you either have to play very safe or you're on the floor. And that is an issue. Take Shattered Halls Heroic, for instance, as a dungeon. The mobs there are ridiculous. There's plenty of them. Each of them does an enormous amount of damage. You have mobs that cleave. You have mobs that put healing debuffs on the tank. And you have mobs that do scattershot. That's another example one can give. Scattershot. Scattershotting that can affect your tank, can affect your healer, can lose control of a large group of, of mobs and make things hell for your group. Now, whether or not those kind of things should be in and to what degree, that's a discussion in its own right. With regards to cleaving mobs, I feel the damage isn't the problem, but I do feel the radius of the cleave. An almost 360 cleave is ridiculous. And this can have an impact on raiding as well, because there are certain mobs in raids and certain bosses in raids that will do the same thing. That if Blizzard were to go completely with pre-nerf mechanics and tuning, they would do these kind of 360 cleaves, making melee far less useful than they can be and then they should be. And that is a problem because you just end up in a situation where melee are perfectly fine on certain in certain dungeons and certain raids, certain boss encounters, but then completely useless in others. And again, melee don't will not have a good time in TPC Classic, regardless of what Blizzard does, just because of the way their damage scaling is. Hunters and Warlocks just will do significantly more damage than they're capable of. When it comes to raid bosses, there are some interesting examples to talk about. The first one would be Solarian. Solarian originally had a mechanic where you had to deal with a debuff that could stack on people and do a ridiculous amount of damage. And careful management of the debuff was a big portion of the fight. Now it's worth saying Solarian, once they nerfed it, because they, they did nerf uh, this mechanic, became a pathetic joke of a fight. It was never really difficult for the vast majority of the raiding community once they got to Solarian. Because you would go with Void Reaver once you got in TK, maybe then you would go to Solarian, but by that point you had already done pretty much all of SSC with the exception of Vash, and you were working on Solarian compared to a lot of the other things you had to deal up until that point, including the very trash to the boss. Dealing with the boss was a joke after they nerfed her, after they changed this mechanic and made it a cakewalk. But the original mechanic of the debuff is not great. The reason it's not great is because the damage is so high and the debuff stacks are so numerous, could can be so numerous, is that the best way of dealing with this boss is either to cheese it with divine intervention from paladins or more likely use arcane resistance on two tanks. Two tanks that are just going to be sitting there in a corner doing fuck all for the entirety of the boss fight. That is not interesting. It does make the fight harder to have the original mechanic of the boss in. It would certainly make things a lot more interesting. And it's and I'm actually quite curious to see what Blizzard has in their files with regards to Solarian. Because sure, private servers say one thing, but very, very few people actually encounter it on retail. It would be interesting to see how all of this plays out with the data that Blizzard actually has. But if this mechanic is going to play out in, in, in this way where you have to have two arcane resistance tank just sitting there doing fuck all in the fight, we could do without it. That's one example. Another example is Lady Vash. Lady Vash is... It was one of the most challenging boss fights when the Burning Crusade originally came out. Yes, tier 5 was very buggy, and yes, things were unfinished, but Lady Vash was very difficult. Uh, a lot of people struggled to get past Phase 2. Phase 1 is irrelevant, always has been. Phase 2 was about managing these ads, killing them in the right order, uh, killing them before you got swarmed by them, and killing the elementals and dealing with the cores uh, to bring down her barrier. And this was one of the main difficulties that a lot of people encountered. Phase 3, once Black Temple came out, once Patch 2.1 came out, um, became largely a joke. Yes, there was a soft range and you could fail that, but it wasn't too much of a difficulty if you could get past Phase 2 to be able to get 
past Vash. You had the DPS requirements uh, to be able to do it. If you could get past phase two, if you didn't get swarmed by Nagas, if you didn't get swarmed by Striders, you, it meant you had the potential as a raid to get past through in phase three. But originally, it wasn't so simple. Originally on Lady Vash, you had a mind control. Now this mind control was ridiculous. It was ridiculous in the sense that the people who got mind controlled did an enormous amount of damage. Their damage potential uh, got vastly increased. I think it was 200% damage increase. They became a lot bigger. They couldn't be CC'd. Now I've done Lady Vash with this mechanic on two different servers. I never encountered her on retail. Very few people even entered phase three on retail while she still had the mind control mechanic. Um, I, I did her twice on two private servers. On one, we had to uh, we had to have a dedicated tank on the people getting MC'd because the damage was that ridiculous. Even if people would unequip their weapons, because if melee didn't unequip their weapons, they were liable to kill tanks, let alone the fact that they could one-shot cloffies. So the damage potential here is insane from people, especially nowadays with the amount of damage people can pull off. So you would have to use an uh, unequipped weapon macro. Now that's just annoying as a melee, your DPS potential would get uh, gets reduced significantly if you have to constantly manage that, unequipping and equipping weapons. It really screws over your rotation. And uh, having the potential of people getting one shot isn't the greatest way of handling it. Since you can't CC people, the damage they do is very high. On another server, we just prayed we didn't get someone that could uh, smash our uh, uh, smash people to pieces, and we had the druid on standby to pick up uh, some casters. Melee, if melee didn't unequip their weapons, they would wipe the raid. Uh, if some casters got it, we needed to have someone pick them up because things would got, get out of control. Now, what Blizzard did with Lady Vash's mind control is they flat out removed it with the release of Black Temple. Persuasion was no longer a thing. That's the ability name. And suddenly, Phase 3 became a joke compared to what it was. How do I feel about this particular mechanic? Well, I think that what Blizzard should do is retain it. But maybe not in its original form, though. If they want to do that, that's perfectly fine as well. It certainly uh, make things a lot more interesting to deal with and made, make Vash the hardest boss in the game by far when Tier 5 comes around far harder than Kael'thas for all the raid coordination that Kael'thas would require. Because having a DPS or K getting mind control and being able to one-shot anyone that raid certainly makes things uh, interesting. But I feel that they should make some change. May maybe make the people CCable or reduce the damage gain that they have when they get mind controlled, something, but something less ridiculous than the original version. There's a lot of things, things Blizzard can do to play around these kind of mechanics to make bosses more interesting, more challenging, and uh, make the raids more interesting, but they shouldn't go overboard, as I've said. Don't worship at the altar of difficulty. Then there was MacFarridan's Lair, and here, it wasn't the boss that really mattered, though MacFarridan was a fairly difficult boss for a lot of guilds to deal with. No, in MacFarridan's Lair, the biggest challenge guilds faced originally, and for a very long time afterwards, was the trash. Wait, trash? Yeah, trash. Trash in Burn Crusade can be very difficult. The trash in MacFarridan's Lair was probably the most difficult trash in the entire game. Forget Mount Hydral, forget Black Temple, forget even Sunwell Plateau. The trash that you have to deal with to get to MacFarridan is its in, own, in its own category. Here we have these Orc Warlocks. Not really Warlocks though, because they have other abilities beyond Warlock ones. They do Unstable Affliction on random targets, each of them. They have Shadow Pole Volley. They have Rain of Fire. They also have an Aggro Reset. Sounds great. Oh yeah, I'm not finished. And each of them can do Shadow Ward Pain on the entire raid at once. And this stacks. So you can have three mobs that are doing sh free Shadow Ward Pains, each of them that's ticking for a ridiculous amount of damage. This trash alone made MacFerdin almost impossible to defeat if you're in a regular raiding guild. Even top guilds struggled with this trash. The problem wasn't just that the trash was very difficult, it was, but that it respawned very quickly. And that it could respawn while you were doing MacFerdin himself. 
with a one hour respawn timer, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was the original respawn timer. And this, by the way, applied to other bosses and other trash packs in the game, but it was especially noticeable on McFarland just because of how difficult the trash was, how easily you could lose people, how easily you could even wipe on this trash and then kill the boss eventually. Uh, but originally, this trash was an absolute nightmare. Then you had the boss itself. McFarlane himself is not really that important. Oh, he has a knockback on people. That's very difficult. Uh, he has a Blast Nova that requires a good amount of raid coordination potentially, but the main difficulty in the actual fight was phase one, was dealing with the adds in phase one. You have a different set of Warlocks this time around. Each of them has a Shadow Bolt Volley. Each of them can also spawn an Infernal or an infinite number of Infernals, dependent on the version of the game you're talking about. Imagine Warlocks that spawn infinite Infernals in the fight that is very difficult to CC even if it's just one can be tricky, but imagine two free Infernals per Warlock. Shadow Ball Volley, Infernals, and they heal. They heal each other once they get low. Oh, and when you kill one, the others all get stronger. So the final one is hitting as a raid boss and doing the kind of damage uh, in terms of raid damage with the Shadow Ball Volley as a raid boss and can still heal itself. You need a good amount of crowd control, you need good interrupts, you need a decent amount of Warlocks to be able to tackle this trash. And then you have Maggie himself. He doesn't really do anything special, he can hit the tank for a decent amount of damage with his cleave, but that's not really the main issue. The main issue on McFarlane is that he has a Blast Nova. Now, to deal with that Blast Nova, you need to click the cubes that these channelers, these warlocks that you've been dealing with, uh, were using. You need to click them in order to banish him for a couple of seconds or the raid wipes. What's the problem? You get the debuff when you click the cubes that can last for so long, dependent on the version you're talking about, that you might need 20 individual clickers to be able to handle it. Again, the fight is a joke. The actual boss himself is a joke outside of this. Yes, he knocks you back, he does fire, he brings the ceiling down, and once he brings the ceiling down, and once he gets to a low percentage of HP, there are patches on the ground where you don't want to stand because you will instantly be killed. But the main challenge is dealing with the adds and then dealing with the Blast Nova, the Blast Nova rotation. How should Blizzard handle it? That's a tricky question. Um, I do feel a larger number of clickers would be warranted to actually give people something closer to the original experience. 20 might be a bit higher, but it could very well be interesting and could actually make the boss fight something closer to his original form. It's worth knowing that the difficulty of McFarland's lair was so high and because you needed to get past McFarland to enter Tempest Keep that the vast number of guilds were never able to do this. Even when they were raiding Tempest Keep, even when they could enter Tempest Keep because Blizzard eventually removed the attunement, there were numerous guilds that were ne never able to get McFarland down. That's how hard of a boss fight he was. And maybe Blizzard should tr try and retain that original experience, make McFarland worth something, because he can be. I mean, sure, top guilds, experienced guilds that have a good amount of coordination, they'll smash through him with ease, right? They will. It's not going to be hard for them to handle the interrupts, the CC and the Blast Nova, but it would certainly make the f boss fight far more interesting than it could be, because the difference between 5 cube clickers, 10 cube clickers, or 20 cube clickers is immense. And then there's tier 6. You know, when we're talking about tier 6 Black Temple Mount Hydro, there weren't that many changes to the actual bosses in them, not significant ones at that. And that's kind of the limitation of like just going with pure pre-nerf uh, mechanics and tuning. Some bosses will be more difficult, others won't really be that affected. And that can be a bit of an issue because it means some bosses will be far more difficult than others, and some will be far more interesting than others. And I think that pre-nerf tuning in its own right isn't enough. I think custom tuning should be on the table. I'm not saying every boss should be hard as nails. I certainly don't think something like Supremus or uh, Ras Winterchill and Mount Hydro should be that difficult, but I think uh, other boss fights could be more difficult, like a Illidan having an HP buff could make that fight more interesting, along with the 15 minute enrage timer, which was his original enrage timer, but if for Blizzard changed it to 25 minutes, 
I think it was shortly after Nihilim killed it, and they killed it, by the way, in that 15-minute enrage timer. But Nihilim had a pretty special kill, because the hardest part of the fight, the hardest phase of the fight, they had a cakewalk uh, on their hands with ads, originally. The, ad, the ads that they killed when they were dealing with Illidan, they had a far easier time dealing with ads because of bugs, because of glitches. And obviously, that's not something that's going to repeat itself. Either way, there are a lot of possibilities for Blizzard with regards to Burning Crusade tuning with dungeons, with raids to make things very hard or very easy or interesting or uninteresting, depending on dependent on what they want to do. And I think they should take a hard look at every boss encounter, at all the trash packs and decide how difficult or how interesting they want those to be. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.